One of the interesting things to me about Zanziar is unlike many contained games, I don't believe it was created by contained game designers. I believe it was created by folks who are more uh, uh, used to role-playing games, which is which are different than contained games in that they're not contained. They are uncontained games because they don't tend to have an end. They tend to be something that you just go through and uh, live in, and it's more of a process than a than a complete work, like a contained game would be. And so too, I think, is Zanziar itself. The game feels very much like a process. The game fits a lot of stuff into its small box. You get uh, a lot of different decks of cards. You get these movement cards. You get item cards, which are special items. You get adventures, which you probably don't want to do. You get all these different armies that you can have. Magic city cards. Um, lots of little pieces and mines and adventures and a rule book. These rules that come with the game are version 6.1, which because there is an internet, I know is not the final rules of the game. In fact, right now they're on version 8 something last time I checked, and it seems like they're still um, in the process of coming up with how the game should actually be played. And I will tell you, every time I play the game, I play using different rules, which is, which for me is great. <laughs> I happen to really like that. There's all these, it works for this game anyway, because there's all these different uh, components that you can use in a lot of different ways, especially since they're card based. For example, these whenever cards, these are these kind of just extra, kind of extra in a lot of senses, uh, cards that just give you some effect. They seem like they're kind of outside of the space of the game. And so one of the first rules changes I made was to take these out. Um, and I don't feel like that impacts the game. Another time I played, you know, I, I had it so that you could get these whenever cards when you go to an adventure. It gave you a, a, a reason to, uh, a stronger incentive to go on these adventures, which can be quite difficult. Which is not to say the game is totally mutable. There are certain elements I, I almost always keep every, in every iteration of the game. Um, for example, um, let's see if I can find one of these guys. No, he's not there. Where is he? No. I think he might be here. Yes. So every every player in the game, and every time I play the game I, I keep this element, um, is going to have one hero that they are. And that hero has some special powers and whatnot. And they also have a special victory condition, or a special uh, set of victory conditions that are unique to them. In order to win the game you either have to kill everyone else, or meet two of your three, generally three, sometimes some people I think have four, yeah, and some people just have two uh, victory conditions. These victory conditions are both very varied and uh, quite indicative of, of the larger story that's going on behind the game. I think, I have the sense that this game is the result of an extensive uh, series of role-playing adventures. I probably read that. Um, you know, a lot of the world is fairly generic, or at least heavily based on Europe, um, but it it does seem like there are these characters with this backstory that it, that extends outside of the game, and I think that's always nice. So, for example, scanning this list here, you'll see that several um, of the people's goals revolve around this the little prince here. Little prince is actually a character you can recruit in the game who's sort of I guess like a baby Jesus. I don't know the the story behind little prince, but um, you know, if someone has the little prince, then they might, that's one of their victory conditions, or if someone else doesn't, or someone kills the little prince, maybe that's their victory condition. So there's this, there's this intricate kind of way that these different, um, characters' goals might interact. The trick is, they're not all in every game, so some, someone might have a goal that so-and-so is killed in the game, but that person might not even be in the game, so... That's why it's nice to have multiple goals to choose from. So there is some cohesiveness. There are some elements that tie the rules together. There are things that make it a distinct game and not just a bunch of components to do with what you want. You know, there's movement, there's the controlling of cities. Um, uh, one thing I like about the game, I just, while I'm thinking about it, I want to mention it to you. Um, couple, two of the stats, there, each character has four stats. Two of the stats involve just dealing with other people and I always enjoy that. I, f I find that in a lot of games it's um, 
a lot of the stats are more about like physically affecting other people when most of my interactions um, and I think even in an adventure fighty magic -y world most of your interactions aren't going to be um, you know directly trying to harm someone you could you know it's, it's there's a lot more negotiation in that and this game definitely accounts for that and so it's looser than a lot of contained games which I think some players might find maddening along with um, some some sort some certain component issues for example the the board is very small but I think even more more what people might find annoying is um, tracking damage on the different cards that you have uh, since you have these cards in stacks and you know if you use any if you get hurt or if you use any magic you have to put these markers on them you're going to have this weird stack of cards with little pieces in it uh, you could write that down um, and just go on the honor system you know it's less visible but you know if someone asks you how much damage is on that card you could just tell them and that's a way around that but anyway these these sorts of issues someone might find annoying i will say however that you know if i was going if the game has a sort of openness um, beyond just its rules structure. You can do a lot of different things. You can go to mines, you can go on adventures, you have armies, and you have, you know, you can get more and more people, well, up to three groups of um, individuals and armies and whatnot on the board, and have them all go around and do different things. And that's a lot of fun. And I think. You know, if I had to choose an adventure game to play, it might be this one, a fantasy-type adventure game. Uh, one thing I like about it is that it, it, like a lot of good history games, it feels like it has a life outside of the game. The game is not entirely fair. Um, a, lot, a lot depends on your goals, uh, where you end up starting out, what other people's goals are, um, and how many of these, these pink adventure cards you get. Uh, you want to have at least three as the game goes on, but you get them fairly randomly. You can try to recruit more and more and more in order to get more of them, but um, if you don't have a lot of them, if you don't end up getting them, you can't have separate groups moving about and that can really affect you. From a contained game perspective, that could be frustrating because essentially the number of actions you get uh, to a certain extent is going to be dependent on luck. From a life perspective, however, maybe that's not so frustrating because, you know, there's certain people who have more abilities than other people and you kind of uh, can come to just kind of work with what you have, do the best you can with what you have. Or in the case of this game, you could always just adjust the rules so that it's a little bit more fair. Either way, Zanziar!